recently I was asked a question, what should someone do if they feel some cognitive dissonance because they understand how hard the church's teachings are for LGBTQ people, and yet they do believe the accepted theology in most conservative churches. They almost feel some cognitive dissonance, like they wish it was easier for LGBTQ people. They wish that they could say, I'm totally affirming. They wish they could see things the way that I do because they can see how hard it is. And yet still they are convinced of the accepted theology in conservative churches. What should someone like that do? And I've got to say, I've got some empathy because I was once in their shoes completely and entirely feeling like, I, I mean, I remember actually literally saying, I really wish I didn't see the Bible the way that I did. And I wasn't even thinking about for me. I mean, at that time in my life, I wasn't even aware of who I was. I wasn't even aware of those things. I just felt that way for the LGBTQ community. And I think that's real. I think a lot of people are in that place. And so I do have some advice for you that I hope will be helpful. My first piece of advice is to keep learning. And this advice actually goes to all of us. Do you have some questions that you aren't sure about yet? Uh, there, there are some things that you still have yet to learn. And some of this could be theological. Some of it could be just like understanding the experiences of LGBTQ people. It could be understanding the history of the church and sexuality. It could be all kinds of things. Understanding the history of the gay liberation movement. How did we get to where we are today? What were the factors that went into that? Keep learning and keep questioning. And that one, that applies to every single one of us, no matter where you are. Uh, don't get settled in a rut, but always stay open and always stay curious. One way you can keep learning, subscribe to my channel. Another way you can keep learning, check the resource list that I have in the description and you can see all kinds of resources that you can look at to learn more about this conversation. Step number two, be relational. And by this, I don't mean relationship evangelism. I don't mean turn LGBTQ people into projects and try to get them to see things the way that you see them. The reason for that is because that's not really relational at all. That's instrumental. That's seeing people as a goal to be achieved instead of having a truly loving relationship with them. That's taking a one step up approach over people. When we see in Philippians 2 that what Jesus did was in fact take a step down approach. Even though he was found in the form of God, he humbled himself and made himself even as a servant. That's the example that we have in Jesus. And that's probably why so many people were drawn to him, people who were on the margins of society and not usually accepted, because he did not have that air of superiority, but rather of open-handed love. And so I would say the second one is to be relational, put people first and allow the Holy Spirit to be the force of conviction in people's lives, not you. How might you do that? if you don't really know LGBTQ people or don't have natural relationships with them? I would say, first of all, you probably do. <laughs> and those people who you do know, just have relationships with them in natural and normal ways. But I would also say that even if you go to a church that teaches the accepted theology of most conservative churches, there are probably a lot of people there who are parents and close family members of LGBTQ people who are wrestling and struggling through these issues. Learn to be someone who comes alongside. Learn to be someone who supports and helps carry burdens, whether it's with LGBTQ people or with their families. You know, start groups and do things in your church just to open the conversation and learn how to love people better instead of using the Bible as like a clobber, as we often have with this subject. Just focus on the love of God and the love of Christ and learn how to care for people better. Number three, and this underlines the other two and everything, and this is more of a theological, this is the kind of root of it, is I encourage and I believe that we need as a church so that we can even understand this issue better, 
we need to move to a third way approach. And what a third way approach is, is it's not saying this church is taking this position or this church is taking this position. And it doesn't even need to be a local church. It can just be you and the way that you treat the people around you. A third way says that I believe that Christians of good faith, Christians of good faith can have a legitimate relationship with God, can legitimately and sincerely be reading the scriptures, and yet can come to different convictions on this subject. And that coming to different convictions doesn't mean that they're no longer Christian, doesn't mean that they're not good enough for you to be in fellowship with anymore, doesn't mean that they're going to hell or that they're going to die eternally. Coming to different conclusions on this topic simply means that you have come to a different conclusion on this topic and that you can be in good faith relationship and community with one another. It doesn't lower your status in the kingdom of heaven by any measure whatsoever. It doesn't make you any less Christian. Doing that would allow all of us to have a much better conversation would allow all of us to live out our Christian faith in a more authentic way with greater integrity. And it would help the church to get past some of its own bigotry and heterosexism and just become a better reflection of who Jesus is, of who God is. Part of the issue here is that the church has really made this a foundational gospel issue as if it was the gospel, as if grace doesn't apply to you on this subject, especially if you happen to be part of the LGBTQ community and come to an affirming position. Grace does not apply on this subject. This is how, unfortunately, too many people in the church have treated this subject. And the third way approach says grace does apply on this subject. This is not a matter of whether someone believes and puts their faith in Christ. This is not beyond redemption. People who sincerely believe this perspective. So I encourage you to take a third way approach uh, in these settings. And I have relationships with people who are LGBTQ and see the subject differently than I do. And we have respect and we have love for each other, even though we've decided to live our lives very differently because we have allowed the Holy Spirit to do the convicting on this subject. And because as queer people, we understand just how hard and complicated this subject is. And it's time that the rest of the church caught up to how hard and complicated this subject is. The truth, though it may be inconvenient, is that for a lot of issues related to marriage and sexuality and even gender, The church has showed quite a lot of flexibility throughout its history. Women are treated dramatically differently, even in the most complementarian conservative churches that you would find today in evangelical or in conservative Christianity. Women are treated dramatically differently than they were 1,500 years ago in the church. The theology has shifted dramatically. The church has wrestled with and allowed for diversity of opinions on all kinds of different subjects, including things like birth control, including things like divorce and remarriage. There has been an acceptance of the fact that people see things differently on all kinds of matters of gender and of sex and of marriage when it relates to heterosexual people. All I'm really asking for is that the same grace be applied to the LGBTQ community. The same recognition that these subjects can sometimes be hard and difficult to wrestle through and that we as a community can seek God and try to better understand together. I hope this has been helpful for you and please pass this on to someone who you might think would benefit from it. It makes a huge difference if you subscribe to my channel. Please do that as well. I love you all, and let's just trust in the grace of Jesus that, you know what, we're going to be okay even if we get something wrong here and there along the way. So blessings to you, and I'll see you later.